Okay, so uh, in this one, in this video, I'm just going to show you how you might go about calculating a, uh, a compound angle using the identities. So um, in this case, what we're looking at is using one of those identities on the right to try and solve this problem on the left. So you can see we've been given uh, two values, sine of x is 3 fifths and sine of y is 5 thirteenths, and we're asked to calculate the value of cosine of x minus y. So um, first thing I would probably want to do is work out, I guess, what we're looking at in terms of triangles. So let's look at this first one. Sine of x is 3 over 5. So if I just drew a triangle here and said that was x, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be the opposite over hypotenuse. We could use Pythagoras to work out that this last side here should be 4. So we know that um, cosine of x is actually going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so 4 fifths. So that, that's going to be really useful. Uh, and then if we just draw another triangle, not to, not to scale clearly, um, and made that y, this is 5 over 13 for sine of y. It's opposite over hypotenuse again. And if we use Pythagoras, uh, we could then work out that this last remaining sign is 12. And you're welcome to to uh, do the calculation if you want, or just trust me. Uh, but what that does mean is that cosine of y is going to be 12 over 13. So now that we know those extra two bits of information, we can go ahead and look at using one of those compound angle identities. So this one over here in the middle looks the go. So we want cosine of x minus y. So that's going to be cosine of x, uh, cosine of y. Now the signs are opposite. You notice in the identity it's minus plus over there, so that'll become plus on the side. Sine of x, sine of y. And now we just go through and put in the fractions as we know them. So cosine x we worked out was 4 fifths, and cosine of y is 12 thirteenths. And then we were given these other two with the signs, so 5 over 13. And now it's just a, a matter of just doing calculations. We've got 48 there and 15 there. They're both over 65, which gives us 63 over 65. And you could leave that as a fraction or turn it into a decimal. But that's the process. Uh, anytime you're asked to actually calculate a, uh, a value of a compound angle, uh, I would sketch the triangle. So step one would be sketch the triangle. And then you can calculate the missing um, the missing fraction from that. And from there, you can go ahead and use the identity. That's an F, by the way. <laughs> and step three is uh, use the identity. And away you go. So there you go. That's an example of uh, calculating a compound angle.